welcome to the first episode of Rocket Talks. Uh, I am your host, Rocket Guy. Um, so yeah, for the first episode, we will be covering liquid bipropellant rocket engine power cycle. So what does that even mean? What is a liquid bipropellant rocket engine power cycle? That seems very that sounds very complicated, um, but it's really just a way that you can actually categorize your rocket engines, right? So, um, so pretty much the first thing first, what is a power cycle. A power cycle basically revolves around how power is derived to feed the propellants through the turbo pumps and into the combustion chamber. Um, it's just like I said, a, an easy way or at least one of the ways that you can categorize all of the different types of rocket engines, right? Every single rocket engine is unique in some way or another. However, each one usually follows one of these five or six different kind of categories that we'll be covering today. Um, so the main thing that you need to know uh, starting off about these power cycles is that you have two different types of systems. You have an open cycle system, and this refers to basically any system that does not have all of the propellant and its byproducts go through the engine. Um, this usually refers to a, a gas generator cycle, and gas generator cycles um, can be found on the Merlin 1D, both the vacuum um, variant and the core stage variant. Um, it's probably the most common type of rocket engine out there. Um, it was also used on the F1 engine and the J2 engine, which were both used on the Saturn, the Saturn V. Um, so now that you have the open cycle system, you also have the closed cycle system. Um, and so a closed cycle system, is, as, as I'm sure you can guess, is just basically a system where all of the propellant um, goes through the engine and nozzle. And none of it is actually wasted by either throwing it overboard or, or you know, attaining losses due to a secondary flow. Um, so basically all of your propellants are used to spin the turbines and then all of your propellants are going through the combustion chamber um, and out the nozzle. So that's that's what a closed system is. So this is a gas generator. Again, you uh, you know all you have here is something that you would find in any book. It's just a diagram made in KSP um, in 3D. Um, basically all you have here is, well, you know, let's launch it and uh, and find out here, right? Let's launch it and find out. All right, so what you have here is your typical uh, diagram, just kind of laid out into KSP components of, uh, of your gas generator. And so like I said, a gas generator is an example of your open cycle. Um, an open cycle system does not use all of its propellant to go through the combustion chamber um, to be you know, vaporized and, and combusted and to go through your nozzle to actually increase your, your kinetic energy, right? Yo, what's up, Sonny? How much of this did you miss? Ah, 10 minutes. 10 minutes or so. Um, so this right here is a gas generator cycle. Um, if you just kind of look at it, the main thing, the main thing that you need to take away from this is that this has something called a gas generator. Um, so basically you have your propellant systems here, right? Um, and so to actually start the engine, you actually have to have some propellant flow into your into your gas generator here. So here we have an igniter. Um, and then you also have, this is actually what's called, or I guess modeled here would be a torch igniter, right? You have a little bit of oxidizer and a little bit of fuel go into an ignition system here. It's usually spark ignited with like a spark plug. And that actually creates a torch. Kind of think of it like a, a welding torch, right? Like an oxyacetylene torch. Um, all it does is it has a jet of flame where your other... Uh, combustible material can actually come into the gas generator and then that exhaust is passed through um, an, an exhaust valve to spin your turbines, right? Uh, so this is your turbine and these are your turbo pumps. They are all connected as one on a single shaft. Um, so as your turbine spins, this also spins your, uh, your turbo pumps. Um, and it's just a cycled system, right? You have some propellant being bled off here to go into your gas generator. Uh, that spins your turbine, that rotates your turbo pump, and then that's, like I said, it's an entirely cy cyclical system, and then some of that propellant, or actually most of your propellant, then goes into your combustion chamber to be expelled, to be combusted and expelled. What makes this an open cycle? Like I said, an open cycle does not use all of its propellant to go through the combustion chamber to be burned and expelled as hot gas, right? In this case, this is an example of something like the Merlin 1D. This is this is basically a Merlin 1D engine, just exp an exploded view, right? Basically, part of all of your gases that are used to spin your turbine are, in this case, e dumped out the side through an exhaust valve. Um, and I actually have a few videos and some pictures to show about exactly what I mean here. Um, so, like I said, some of this uh, propellant gets bled off of both your 
fuel and oxidizer goes into your gas generator and that gas generator then explodes those com those combustible materials to spin your turbine right you know hot gas expands rapidly and your turbine is built to basically take that expanding gas to rotate itself um, and then that gas then now gets dumped off the side. There is another version. There is another version. This is actually what the Merlin 1D vacuum engine does. Is it just takes this uh, dumped exhaust valve um, or exhaust pipe and it hooks up another pipe to go right back into the nozzle. Um, so in that case, you're actually acquiring a little bit improved performance um, compared to just dumping off the uh, exhaust because you're actually now reacquiring some of your your combustible materials to be ejected out at high velocities, right? You're, you're not losing as much um, as much mass flow rate going uh, just being dumped off the side. Um, so if we actually go ahead and spin this up, this is basically the startup sequence um, in action here. So. Let's go ahead and see here. So first we have the uh, Spark Torch Igniter. There we go. Spark Torch Igniter ignites, right? It uh, starts your... Goes in, starts your... Uh, starts spinning your turbine. And then that turbine has its own exhaust getting dumped off the side. And then after a short, very, very short time. This actually happens in like a second. In a second to get it all done. Um, so you go from your igniter to your turbine spinning, exhaust being dumped, to your rocket engine ignition. Um, that's basically how a gas generator cycle actually functions in real life. Like I said, this is just basically that model, but in an exploded view, an exploded cutout view, where you can actually see everything kind of laid out in a, a little bit better uh, way, at least visually, right? Because actually, if you look at a rocket engine, all this stuff is compact in a very, very small space. Um, so what's great about a gas generator is that this is used for moderate to large power systems, right? Because it's, it's a very simple design and it can actually achieve very, very, very high amounts of thrust because it, it can actually achieve really, really high uh, mass flow rates, right? Um, however, it's, it's important to note that because the gas generator burns propellants at a less than optimal mixture ratio, uh, this actually causes, you know, you're, you're losing some of your propellant that you can actually be combusting and ejecting out your nozzle to actually get higher kinetic energy, right? Um, so this is very, very good in terms of thrust. That's why it's used on a lot of um, core stages, right? A lot It's used on the Merlin. It was used on the F1. It was used on the J2 rocket engine. All of these are really, really good in terms of just high thrust, decent, decent ISP. Uh, but overall, that ISP, you actually are losing performance because you're dumping some of your propellant out without it actually being combusted. What's the ISP comparative to others? Um, so a gas generator or something like this usually has something around 300 to 350 seconds. Um, something, and we'll be talking about these other types uh, shortly. Something like the stage combustion cycle, like the SSME. Uh, the Space Shuttle main engine has something on the order of 450 seconds. So why dump the exhaust if it can all be used as extra propellant? Um, added complexity, right? That's pretty much it. That's pretty much what it comes down to. Added complexity um, and just trying to package everything together. So if you actually look at you know the SpaceX's Merlin 1D core engine, it just dumps all of its exhaust off the side. Well, why does it do this? Why doesn't it just take this, put another pipe on it, and expel it out the nozzle? Um, Mainly because that's a much more complex system, right? Now you have nine engines, each with an extra pipe, so that's added mass. You have some sort of, you know, packaging issue, right? Because now that that pipe has to come all the way back around, go around the nozzle and be dumped through it. Um, so it's just not always the best case for, you know, only a small incremental increase in ISP, right? We're not talking about dumping it back into the nozzle increases your ISP by 100 seconds. It's just, it's a small incremental change. Um, comparatively so it's not always the best answer right it's just not always the best answer so you know it doesn't necessarily always make sense to do it it's really it really just comes down to the vehicle design point um, and whether or not you need just that little bit of uh, um, of ISB gain and if it actually makes sense in terms of your overall design with packaging with other materials but yeah so like I said, just to summarize all this up, right? You have a what's called in the middle a gas generator that bleeds off some of your propellant and oxidizer to spin your turbine, right? Because you're expanding those gases, those those that fuel and oxidizer comes together. You light it on fire, it expands rapidly, heats up. That causes your turbine to spin. 
Now, since all of this is connected on one shaft, and these are attached turbo pumps, so once your propellant starts to flow, once you open your, your fuel and oxidizer valves, this will automatically create a low pressure system and will actually force, right, it's spinning really, really fast, like really fast, and I have a video to show this here in a moment. These are spinning very, very rapidly. It's causing all of your fuel to just be forced through it, right? Um, and that's what's actually causing you to actually get all of your propellant into your combustion chamber. So it's a cyclical, cyclical system. Some of it is being bled off to start your pre-burner to spin your turbines. Um, but then a majority of it is going into your combustion chamber to be actually ignited. Now, for something like a gas generator, it usually has a tap-off percentage of about 7 to 12% of your overall propellant, right? It's not a lot, um, but that 7 to 12% is, you know, is essentially wasted energy it's not it's not wasted energy but in terms of fuel efficiency and what you actually could get out of your vehicle it is wasted energy right it's just being used to spin the turbine and there's really nothing else to it um, there are other systems that will be going here uh, shortly that you know minimizes this loss and it actually uses all of its propellant to either spin the turbine and go through the combustion chamber or vice versa so uh, so yeah that is the gas generator um, so if you actually so, some, so just kind of summarizing the advantages and disadvantages, because we've been kind of like going back and forth here. Uh, the advantages are, this is a pretty simple design compared to other types of rocket engine cycles, right? It's all independent parts, all of it. All of it is independently, all of it is independently integrated, right? You have a turbo pump connected on a single shaft to a turbine, right? That's one system. You have a pre-burner, second system, and then you have your uh, propellant feed lines and your rocket engine. Like, they're all pretty much working independently of each other. I mean, yes, some of them are dependent on others, but they're all independent components. Um, so, since they're all uh, pretty simple to design independently from each other, and they're independently integrated into the vehicle, this actually allows for lower development costs and testing costs, right? Because you can actually take, a, take off this pre-burner um, and you can test that individually, or you can take off this turbine um, and hook it up to a pre-burner and test them together, right? So it actually makes for a very, very low development cost to other types of rocket engines. So these are more first stage engines rather than upper stage engines. Yes, Andy, Sam, uh, in terms of uh, most, you know, industry standards, gas generator cycles are for core stage engines, your first stage engines. We're talking F1, um, you know, F1 engine, Merlin um, engine, uh, some of the... Now, now, some of the upper stages do use this. Merlin 1D Vac uses this, and the J2 engine, which was meant for, which was used on um, the Saturn V, right? Those are also upper stage engines that use gas generator cycles. However, those are built to be high, high thrust to weight ratios, right? You actually have a very, very high thrust output. So some disadvantages of this are lower ISP and efficiency, right? Because you're dumping some of your 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 expanded gases just just off the side and even when you actually connect it back into uh, your nozzle here to dump it out there you're only like I said gaining a small amount of your efficiency back it's not a lot um, not as much as if this was a stage combustion cycle a closed cycle system but how small do the fins have to be to not cause friction and break the turbine um well I will show you but it's not it's not very big right and you also don't have a lot of blades either because you don't necessarily need that much energy you're not trying to spin an entire jet engine right you're just trying to spin a small little uh a small little turbine a small little turbo pump rather um so overall the the size of your turbine is not very large right if we actually look at something like the ssme um actually let's look at the merlin 1d merlin 1d Let's see if we can't spot it in this picture. Here we go. And there it is. Look at that. There's your turbine, right? So it's not small. I mean, it's it's big. It's beefy. But it's also, comparative to the entire size of your engine, it's really small, right? I mean, it's look at it. It's, it's pretty small. It's not a very large system. Um, so I hope that answered your question. This is... Uh, hold up. Hold up. So this, and guard your ears, mind you. I'll turn it down as well. Uh, this is a video of the Merlin 1D um, pre-burner turbine turbo pump startup sequence, right? Um, so just, I want you to listen to it. I'm going to try not to blast your ears too badly here because um, it is very, very loud. Um, but just listen to the turbine spooling up. It all happens, like I said, within a second of each other. Your pre-burner is ignited. Your turbine starts to spin up. Your uh, turbo pumps are immediately affected because they're all in the same shaft, right? So as fast as your turbine's spinning, your turbo pump and fuel is starting. Um, and then this, you can actually see this right here is going to be the exhaust dump valve. 
um, and it's just going to be it's just going to be blowing black smoke from the uh, from the combustion of the pre burner or the gas generator. And there's the exhaust. So that's how fast it actually starts up. So when they hit when they hit one t minus one second, right? You can actually uh, look at it on um, one of their one of their launches like every launch you can actually hear the entire engine start to spool up um, there is actually a spool up time because um, you actually have to start that propellant feed cycle to actually go into your gas generator which depends your turbines and your turbo pumps um, but just like I said listen to the actual sound of the turbine start to spin up it is revolving probably around 30,000 rpm if not more uh, it's very fast and it starts dumping out the uh, the exhaust um, so that is essentially, if we look back at this, right, all that is, and this is what I was talking about earlier with the advantage of the system, right, you can actually independently test certain parts of this, uh, this gas generator cycle. So all that was, was your gas generator with your ignition system and your turbo pumps and your, uh, and your turbine, right? So it had no fuel pumps, really. I mean, there was, they were feeding, I think, their, their, their fuel through it. But uh, they didn't have, you know, it wasn't integrated into the vehicle. So all it was was this, just just this system right here, and that's what they were testing. We also have another one. I wanted to show you guys the uh, the Merlin 1D vacuum engine, um, and its startup sequence actually in space is actually really cool as well. Um, so let's see. This is from CRS 11, I think, if I remember correctly. Yes, it is. Uh, so let's go ahead here. So this is obviously Falcon 9, right? Right before it's uh, Miko and it's uh, second stage ignition. Let's see, where is it? Yeah, right here. So you have main engine cutoff. It's going to boost it away. And then right here, right? Let's see. Not yet. But right now, at this point, your pre your gas generator is already starting to cycle. Your, prop your uh, propellant is starting to go into your gas generator. Your turbine is starting to spin, and pretty soon you'll have ignition, right? Um, so if we actually go here, and start, okay, right there, right there. You actually start to see some of the oxidizer, which is blowing out this white smoke, this white, uh, you know, vapor. Um, that's your oxidizers coming out of your pintel injector, because Mer the Merlin 1D vacuum and the core stage both use a pintel injector, right? So this is your oxidizer just being blown out through the injector right here before it actually ignites. Yeah, so that's a gas generator cycle. That is a gas generator cycle in its uh, simplest stages. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Jason. Uh, the LTV, yeah, the smaller rocket engines in KSP do in fact show some of the uh, some of the stuff that we actually have in real life, right? So if we actually go in here uh, with the LT LV T45, we'll turn it upside down here. This is actually a lot more realistic, right? You have a combustion chamber. Uh, you look like you have, I don't know, maybe a pump or something here. And then you also have your gas generator um, exhaust dump. So this is actually definitely a lot more realistic than what the vectors use, right? Because your vectors have none of that. It's just an engine nozzle. It doesn't even have a combustion chamber. Uh, but the LTV-45s definitely have um, something that you, a little bit more of something that you would find um, in the in real world. Um, you have a combustion chamber actually fully modeled here. You have some kind of pump or maybe your gas generator here, and then you also have your exhaust dump here. Um, so yeah, you're right. I actually, I actually kind of forgot about this. All right, so we've covered gas generator cycles and we've covered uh, pressure fed cycles as well, right? Now we're going on to the more complicated closed engine cycles, such as your staged combustion cycle.